Hello, hello. Thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Krista White. I'm the Director of Marketing here at Crow Canyon. And we have a great workshop planned for you today with an overview of all the new Nitro Studio features that have come out. I'm joined today by our VP of, of uh, Operations, James Restivo, and our uh, resident Nitro expert. Uh, now today, we, before we get into it, we do have some high level information for you today. Obviously, we can always get more nitty gritty. So if you do have questions and you wanna really get down um, into the, the deeper details and talk about your specific organization, I would definitely recommend uh, some one-on-one -on -one time with us. Uh, but that being said, don't be shy. Use that question box, it's on the right side there of the screen. Go ahead and pop your questions in there as we go. And lastly, this will be recorded. So we'll be uploading this to our YouTube channel as well as our website and you can reference back to it um, if you have any questions or want to share with your colleagues. Um, now, that being said, I won't take up any more time. I'd like to go ahead and hand things over to James. Thank you, Krista, I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, we got some some good topics to talk about today, and I, I know it's been a little while since we've done an uh, update of new Nitro Studio features. Um, so we will, there are a lot that go out, uh, minor updates here and there. I'm gonna talk about some of the more major updates that have happened over the last couple months. Uh, but you can always go into our version log and our Nitro uh, release notes, which is on our kirkhannon.help website to get more details about what's being released, what we're putting out there from a Nitro standpoint, feature set. Uh, you know, it'll, it'll tell you which which apps are getting updated, what what we're doing with them. And the version log is going to be your best bet for like minor feature updates and bug fixes and things like that. So certainly take a look at that. Uh, what I'm going to focus on today is more of the the highlights and also give you a little insight to what we're working on in general, just what behind the scenes, what's happening with with Nitro and how we're, uh, you know, we're keep moving on, on getting new things out there, new features and uh, what, what's in the pipeline. Um, so with that, I'll go ahead and, um, you know, I'll actually leave, leave up on uh, Chris's screen for now. I'll take, take control in a little bit. Um, one thing I wanted to, a couple things I wanted to talk about ahead of time are some things we're working on from, for Nitro in the background. Not, nothing to show yet, but it's just some things that we are, we're op, uh, working on. Uh, we want, we, we're doing a lot of work with AI features. Uh, so we've done, uh, if you have seen any of our service desk demos or, or Nitro, new, newer Nitro help desk demos, we have uh, a KB Copilot in there, which it helps to search through a KB uh, knowledge base list and bring back information in a chat GPT style. If you've used chat GPT, I mean, at this point, who hasn't? Uh, and that is something we incorporate into our help desk program. Uh, and it's something we're looking at, obviously, improving in uh, across the board in Nitro and having a little more uh, options available, more features available for the AI component. Certainly want to tag that into our Nitro Engage bot as well, so that when you engage with Engage, it's more of a conversational situation, uh, a la ChatGPT, uh, so it, with obviously a robust uh, set of data in the background feeding into that conversation so that you can get the information you need. So that's you know, a couple of things we have on the roadmap, not, you know, kind of a distant roadmap at the moment because a lot of those things take time to uh, get into place uh, but we are working on that uh, we've we have rolled out and are continuing to roll out improved UI and branding options a lot of those are handled through like the advanced JSON settings if you look in Nitro list views or you look in some of the other apps we have in the advanced area there's a we, we keep adding into that extended settings area different things that you can control turn on turn off bold, highlight, change font color, et cetera. Uh, like I said, a lot of that's mentioned in our version log, um, and we'll go through all that in detail today, but there's certainly, if you want to get more information about it, certainly let me know, and I can dig into that a little more. So that, that gives you more options for how the look and feel of the site is presented to the end users, and so you have more options on, on that front. Um, and one final thing, uh, just on roadmap, perspective that I want to talk about is you may have heard in the Office 365, Microsoft 365 space about the uh, deprecation of add-ins, how add-ins are not going to work anymore for uh, Office 365 tenants. Uh, we are very actively working on a uh, uh, fix for that so that our, continue, our product will keep working. For all of the folks on this call currently using Nitro Studio and Microsoft 365, you don't have to worry about 
any kind of upgrade path for a while, those add-ins will keep working until April 2026, so more than a couple of years. Well ahead of that deadline, we'll, we, we will have an upgrade path for you, an upgrade story on how that's going to go. Um, and for newer customers coming in, we'll have a, uh, a you know switch to the, to the solution between now and when uh, when we're no longer able to use those items. So very top of mind, I just want to put out there, we're definitely working towards it, uh, a fix for that. And it's, it, it does look like we're going to have a, a solid answer for that uh, add-in situation um, in the not too distant future. So stay tuned for that. Um, so without further ado, I'll get into some of the features that we're going to talk about today. So I'm going to go ahead and make myself presenter and share my screen. All right, you should be seeing Nitro Forms. Looks like you are, so that's good. Um, okay, great. So one of the things we, we released recently in the Nitro Forms tool set is the ability to drag and drop fields between sections within the form. Now this is something we didn't have in there before. So previously what you'd have to do is select your field delete it from the existing location and re-add it to the new location. Not a huge thing, but it is a minor, um, you know, kind of minor inconvenience to have to do that, right? So what we want to do, what we're going to do now is show you, if I think it's going to happen for any of these, but I'll do it for section. I'll just create a default section here, put it somewhere in the middle of my form. And instead of dragging from the left over here, I can go ahead and move this assign to directly into that. So now you can see it's within that container, it's removed from the previous container, and it's it's now it's in there. Um, so that is a new feature we have for the uh, drag and drop interface in Nitro Forms, just make it a little easier for you, a little more fluid. Uh, it just makes things simpler for designing your forms and not having to say, okay, well, I had a whole bunch of stuff here. Uh, this is great, you know, drag, drag it over here from the right, or from the left, excuse me yada 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 um but now it's like oh you know what actually that needs to be in a different section okay now i gotta go and delete it and yeah you get the story i think you guys have all experienced that if you're building out forms and building out tools uh with our applications you're going to get some benefit out of that when building new forms you'll be able to uh, just drag and drop things between um, the sections pretty easily now one thing i did notice just uh, for clarity's sake it does not have does not work for from you know, across tabs, right? So each tab still has to be handled separately. So that, that is a uh, one thing that's you know because it's not in the same UI. How how will we drag it over there? But um, just one thing to keep in mind is it's going to work across sections within the form. Like if we, even if I switch this over to B sections, um, and this actually could be a way you do it is you say you know you have your tab two section down here. You could take your field. I think I thought you could do it. I'm even not. Let me try it. Yeah, you can look at that. Yeah, so you can. That's one way to do it to across tabs is to change them to sections temporarily, and then you can uh, drag and drop and put things where you want them to be. And then once you're ready to switch back to tabs, just go ahead, and select tabs, and things will go back to um, the way they were. So now you got the tab two with all those new fields on it. So that's one way to do it. But yeah, it has to be done through sections interface, whether it's a section within the tab or sections within sections or you know, just uh, sections instead of tabs, um, that, that that drag and drop feature is going to be available for you to uh, to move things across the different elements of the Nitro form. So I thought it was a pretty cool, uh, you know, nice slick update to help you get your forms designed a little quicker, or maybe a little slicker. So uh, that's that feature in Nitro forms. One other thing that we've put in place, and I brought this up, I think, in the last updates call, and it's a minor improvement to the save conflict situation. So you may remember in a previous update, what we released was the ability to mark a form to keep looking for background changes, meaning if one person has the form open and saves their changes, and another person has the form open in edit mode, it'll throw an error that says, hey, just letting you know, someone saved changes to the form that you're working on. Uh, it doesn't say that specifically, but it, it pretty much gives you that, that uh, message that uh, you can now um, keep those changes that the person made or discard the changes that the person made. It's, it's up to you how you do it. We had a couple different options. Now we're giving you three options and I'll, I'll show you that. But before I get into that, just to show you where that, that lives, it's in the advanced settings section of the form tool. 
and it's this background item update section in on at the the bottom of this advanced forms settings section so i just want to remind people where that is in case you haven't uh seen it before you can go to your advanced settings and you know, go to, if you're in the nitro form interface manage forms advanced settings and uh, uh there it is down at the bottom turn that on and it'll you give it can give it an interval for checking for how long it's going to take between uh, checks to see to see what's happening. So in practice, what that looks like is I have these two uh, fields open, and, and yes, I am the same user logged in. I could do it as two different users, but it'll show just the same whether it's the same user or not. So if, if you uh, in this area where you maybe you forget you had the form open in two different tabs, you go ahead and make a change over here. And then you forget, wait a second, I still had it open over here. Did I make those changes? Well, here's what's going to happen. So you hit you change something like priority to critical. All right, okay, so we're going to change that in this form. And you see you have, have the, the form open over here without the priority selected. So I'll go back to this other form, save that. And then what's going to happen over here on this uh, form that I still have open it's going to give me this message. This item has been modified uh, this many seconds back. Uh, item must be reloaded before it can be saved. So even if you made changes, you do have to reload it, but you do have options when you reload. So what will happen is you click the reload button, it shows you what has changed. Who changed, you know, obviously who changed it, and what has changed. You could choose to discard your changes and keep the person's background changes. You could keep your changes and erase the person's changes, like let's say you'd selected priority also on this one, or you could keep the background changes and erase your changes. So those are um, those are some some options. So discard my changes, I think, just closes out the form and just you can reload it as uh, as if the person is if you just come to it for the first time after that person loaded it in. Uh, the other two options for keeping your changes and just keeping the background changes. There's really only going to be a conflict if you have your, uh, if you're updating the same field, like in this case, priority. If I had updated priority on this form, there would be a conflict. So I could choose to keep my option or keep the background option in that same field. Now, if they're not updating the same field, you can see here, oh, you know what? I wasn't dealing with priority. That's fine. Let's go ahead and keep those background changes and then we'll, I'll, I'll just keep going and, um, I go on uh, as, a, as if I was uh, just still making changes. So you can you can see that, okay, now the priority has changed to critical. You could go and change that, of course. Uh, but you, you you see you've kept the person's background changes because you're not, not actually updating the same field. Uh, so if you do that again, price, let's say it's 1200. And I go ahead and save that um, over here. And now you can see, okay, it's uh, it must be reloaded before it can be saved, reload. And I'm going to, um, you know, keep my changes. But so there was, since there's no conflict, it kept the background changes. You see, since the even though I said keep my changes, I didn't update the price field, so it didn't matter. Um, so you know, it's just kind of different different options there. But it allows you the user to be able to see what was changed, and uh, you know, decide whether to keep those changes. You can even if you you know need to take a screenshot and say you know what, I'm going to screenshot what those changes are, redo them myself or whatever. There's various ways you can handle it, but I I think those three options of you know discarding your changes or keeping the background you know discarding the background changes or uh, just kind of reloading the form with the the background updates you know all those options are available to you. They should give you enough to to work with. All right, uh, okay. And certainly, if you have any questions on that, you can pop them into the the, the questions box. Uh, I really only have one final thing I wanted to talk about, kind of keep it a little little short for you guys today, is and not take up too much of your time. Is this uh, um, the copy options that we've put into place across various apps that we have? So we, you know, previously you could export Nitro Forms and import them again. You could export custom actions and import those again. You could export uh, workflows and, and you know well I guess you still have to do that across um, uh, uh, sites but within within the uh, the tool if you go to a list roll off for instance you take that as an example uh, you'll see this copy option across multiple apps now and what that's going to do is it's going to take exactly what this is a copy of this these settings these issue tracker items um, list roll up settings and just pop open that settings box and you give it a new name 
and then make whatever other updates you want. But you can see columns are already selected because that's what's configured here. Data is already selected because that's what's configured here. Any UI settings that you've put in place are moved over. Uh, if you've enabled mobile mode, you can all those settings would be retained. Or let's say you want to have a mobile mode version and a non-mobile mode version, that's fine. Uh, toolbar settings options all move over. So every every all those settings and here's those you know all including here all these extended settings in the JSON section will be copied over into the new setting. And all we need to do is rename it and make whatever changes we want to make. And now we have. Um, uh, oh, because I enabled mobile mode. Hang on, I turned that off. Um, and now we have two different, you know, copies of that same setting. So you can play with one and see if you like it. Keep the old one, and uh, yeah. So it gives you a chance to have a kind of a dev version of it and uh, a production version. Someone's using it. You don't want to change what they're actually using, but you want to play around with the settings. Well, you can copy those settings. Put this list list roll up on a new page. Play around with the settings until you get to the way you like it, and then you know you could you could copy it over and have that the, the those settings that you updated uh, put onto the the original page. And you're going to see that across uh, various apps. We have that for list views and list roll ups. We have that for Nitro reports as well. So if you go into our Nitro reports app, uh, you can see you have that uh, here for a copy. And again, it's just going to directly take you to the settings page, uh, but create a, create a copy of that uh, original uh, original settings. You see status field, you know whatever else, whatever you had set up there, which this one didn't have a lot in it, but that's okay. Yeah, copy copy the name. There you go. It's got the list. It's got the view. Um, that last one didn't have the list review for some reason. Uh, must have been in the original settings and didn't have it either. I'm not sure why. But this one has it. See, so it brings it all across. All those settings, so you don't have to redo it. And so you make your updates, make your changes, and go from there. Uh, so you've got that in Nitro Reports. We've got that in List View, List Rollup. We've got that in the Tiles and Dials as well. And, and Nitro Workflows and Custom Actions. It should be there as well. Uh, so... That's uh, pretty much covers what I had for you today. I know kind of keep it a little short, a little short and sweet. Uh, you were, like I said, we're working on a, a bunch of different things in the background and hopefully have a, a, a lot more to show you in the coming months. Um, but that's that's what we've got working for us uh, in the Nitro studio. Uh, if there's any questions, you know, feel free to pop them in or if there's anything you want to see specifically in these Nitro workshops, um, there is a survey that will go out at the end of this uh, session so that you can uh, record what you want to see. And I, I do look at those surveys, of course, and I try to design or decide what my next topics topics are going to be based on what people are interested in seeing. So if there's anything that you want me to cover specifically in Nitro workshops, answer the survey, fill it out, let me know what you want to see, and I'll get that uh, going for the next, uh, you know, I'll try to work it into the upcoming workshop uh, schedule. Um, and if you have any suggestions about frequency of workshops, I know we were doing them about once every two weeks or so. We kind of took a little break over the holiday period uh, into the beginning of the year. But if there's um, a cadence that you think is best uh, for you, for you, let me know, and I, I kind of maybe I'll take a poll on the next uh, workshop and just see what works best for people. But um, with that, I, I appreciate everyone joining today, and I hope you have an excellent rest of your day. Thank you so much, James, for, for all the great info today, too. I think uh, I'm always excited to see all the, the new updates, and uh, I, don't, I don't think I'm alone. So <laughs> appreciate everyone joining us today as well. And um, also a friendly reminder, we have some upcoming in-person events, um, including the North American Cloud and Collaboration Summit coming in April. Um, that'll be in Dallas, Fort Worth area. So if anyone's in that neck of the woods, feel free to check it out and uh, or reach out to us for a discount code if you want to grab a ticket. Um, be great to see some of you in person. All right. Thank you. Have a nice day, everyone. <laughs> Thanks, everyone.